the thing. Okay, cool. We're back. <clears throat> All right, yeah. Let's 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 go with the. Uh, we'll go with the. With the heron, this guy down here. Um, if you have your color pencils, I say get them. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna start mine without color pencils, but. I might just be being a wimp about it. Cool, oh my gosh. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna use kind of the same, uh, not the same techniques of thinking about the Samoa, but I don't know, kind of the same. Um, I don't know where to start. Anybody have a recommendation? The head. Okay. Um, done and done. All right. I'm going to start with the head. Now, the head I can see is basically in two parts. Um, it's the cranium, like the skull, and then the large beak. So the 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 oval for the head, and it. I'm going to call it an egg because if you think about an egg. Um, the base of the egg or the back of the egg is thicker and then it kind of gets narrower and there's a pointed part of the egg, which is the, I would, what I would consider the top of the egg. So it's the bottom of the bowl, which is wider and it comes to a point. Okay, cool. Now we're started. Um, and off of the bottom of that egg, we're going to nail down a triangle for the beak. Um, immediately, you have this suggestion of light and dark coming from above and to the light into the left. So the back of the head is darker and then the bottom of the beak is darker. Now, the interesting thing about that is this early on, you know, in a composition, that's an assumption. Um, meaning the, there's birds that have like two color beaks that have a top part that's light and a bottom part that's dark. And he could have feathers on the back of his head um, that are darker. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's the light source, but in this case, I'd say probably. Um, this is a small sketch. Um, so the details are you know, limited, meaning like you can only get so detailed at a certain size. Um, this entire drawing is eight by 10. Holy crap, sorry, I didn't mean to say it. The, um, this is actually life-size. So the, the, the book that I have, it might be actually even a little bit larger than life-size. So what, we're draw what I'm drawing is like essentially one-to-one. -one. Um, so that's cool. I actually like, uh, I like making, I love studying drawings in that context. Um, okay. Hey Trevor. Yeah. Does this like not, bird like not have a neck? It's so interesting you say that. I think it does. Now, I was just about to go into that. So like, if you look at the, there's this connecting point that looks like it's like the shoulder kind of butting up against the lower part of the egg, like right here. Um, I think this is um, his, obviously it's his back. Um, and then if you see this like teardrop shape, it's kind of like a curvy teardrop. I believe the neck without the feathers, I think the neck goes like this. I've drawn herons and cranes before. I think the back of the, you know, the back of the head, you get the back of the neck. Then you get near the chin, the base of the chin, you get the front of the neck. I think it's gonna drop down and enters kind of relatively into the, you know, into the lower part of this egg. And then that's gonna we can you know express the wing on this side. Now, I think that's what's happening. But instead of drawing that solid um, line for the outside of the neck, I think the artist is showing that there's like some uh, puffy feathers, and that kind of eases the transition or even hides the transition from the neck into the body. Did that, was that a good explanation? So I tried to show it there. Um, now, the thighs, um, the thighs are kind of tucked in close to the body. 
So you don't get to see them as much, but you do want to notice that it does happen. So knee to ankle, it's all like the, the, the legs are all tucked in underneath this big wing. Um, what you're seeing is the knee to the ankle, which is this lowest part before you get to the trapezoid of the first part of the leg. So this is ankle. So the ball of the foot, I don't know. The anatomy looks weird. <clears throat> the leg itself, it looks as though it's in two parts though. So there's the trapezoid for the first portion and then there's a triangle for the narrower portion. And then there's the feet that are perfectly in profile. So there's toes that run forward and there's toes that go back. Now this seems more obvious to me where you get the, um, you know, he's perched on one foot, which is very typical. And then you get, um, you know, the two little, two little toes of his, you know, his heel that's been lifted up. Maybe this is the knee to the ankle. I have to get my uh, Heron anatomy book. Um, it's amazing because this Heron does a nice job in the composition, at least, defining the water from the land. So the, 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 the foliage or the shoots of grass that are kind of coming out of the ground um, are silhouetted by water. So this is all water behind. And you know it's water, I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see the beginnings of those ducks. Um, you know, birds have beaks, heads, necks, wings, legs. Um, they also have tails. And I think there's gonna have to be something of a tail down here, like an extension. And I know it's hard to tell the difference between the wing um, and that tail, but maybe you can clarify it kind of in your own mind, just naming, uh, naming those parts, you know, as abbreviated as it is. I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything. It is a dark uh, heron up against the, uh, light of the water. So he shades the heron, makes it kind of gray with some tonal lines. He even does it to the head too. Uh, he doesn't use um, tone like with uh, like blending, like a tortillion, he just uses some straight lines. I'm gonna switch over and actually blend it, I think. But hopefully there's not too much. If the graphite is super soft, um, when you start blending it, it just goes completely dark. Um, and that kind of happened here, but whatever, I can have a dark hair in. Um, when I move this over, one of the things you can, if you wanted to make this arrangement, if you want to look at where this duck begins and then where the heron's head, I think the the duck's head is, I don't know, maybe like an inch above. Now it's not on the, it's not immediately above the heron, but um, it's on this horizontal plane. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I'm sketching some lines in the ground. So in the larger composition, it does look as though there's sort of this path that comes in uh, that leads down into the water, uh, which I kind of like. Uh, I hadn't noticed it before, but um, a lot of times you can tell where, um, you know, like if you're go, what, you know, hot, what, you know, hiking along um, like streams and rivers and things, you can tell when like where beavers have come in and out. There's like usually like a a slick path and you know i'm not saying this word like where the beavers come and go but it's definitely 
um, a path that leads up to the water, kind of goes over. You can imagine like down at the bottom, it's just a little, uh, you know, like a little, like a sandy beach or something like that, you know, a teeny beach. Um, I guess what I'm saying is I'm, I'm just leaving the, this area open so that you can get a sense of um, an angle of the path and then just some other mark making. You know, there's some like taller um, shoots. You know, I could even envision like some cattails in here. You know, this is my book. So I don't always draw my book, but I do make, you know, sometimes I make some additions. I love the, I love those little cattails there. So you got, you know, short grass kind of tall leading down and going over the hill. And then um, at least the, the grass on this side almost frame out, um, you know, the picture kind of like stops um, at the edge, which is kind of nice. And I am sketching off screen, just so you know. This hill even feels like it comes down. Nice. All right, this is what I have so far. Scary. Hmm. Let's try one more. Let's just follow. Let's just follow the. Uh, Let's follow the direction of the, the heron. The heron's like pointing in, his gazing direction is to the left. And then the ducks are also, you know, swimming to the left. And I think they'll set us up nicely um, for, the, for, the, for the stag. And the stag is kind of a handsome the beast in this drawing and really elegantly drawn. <clears throat> I drop this down. We can expand on our, our scene. It's tough on the zoom. It's tough on the zoom. Um, all right, let's zoom in a little bit, see if I can keep everything and visibility. That's about as wide as I can go. All right, that's are pretty good for the ducks though. You should be able to see them enough. Okay, so um, for the ducks, I have drawn the ducks and I did something really, really helpful um, in terms of starting the ducks. Um, the way I started them was I used the Nike symbol. So if this is the, I might, I might even draw them a little bit larger. Um, this is the Nike swoosh. That is kind of the bottom of the duck. So this little Nike swoosh action. Say what you want about the company. It's a really elegant, um, you know, symbol. And that actually sets us up really nicely for how the duck is resting in the water. I don't know if you can see this, but there's almost like some little duck, uh, duck feet like paddling in the back. And, you know, there's the underside, you know, ducks are essentially boats. Um, they really are. Um, they're buoyant, they're, they're, they're just incredible forms. When they're in the water, they're incredible forms to analyze. Um, so I'm kind of showing the shadow under plane. And, you know, the, there's the, the front of the buoyant um, duck. And then similarly, we have to transition into um, the head. And I think the head is a lot like the heron in the sense that we have, you know, a rounded back of the skull. And then this was the thing um, that I also learned about the way he was sketching this duck. Um, it's like a duck. When you think about a duck bill platypus, you think about Donald Duck, um, the top of the beak is swells down. And then the bottom of the beak swells up. And it's almost so cliche that, you know, you just want to hear like Donald Duck's voice as you, um, you know, as you draw it. 
but the um, ducks really do this. Um, all right. The last kind of little thing that I did here was I added, you know, I did the back of the neck as it came through, and then I did this elegant S curve. You know, it's the mat, the hill goes up, and it goes to the bottom of the hill, and then it swells up again at the bottom. I just love that. So with so few marks, um, you know, there's a really wonderful explanation of the duck. So you have the back of the head is a little bit darker. You have the underside of the beak, which is darker. You have the underside of the boat, you know, the bottom of the Nike swoosh, which is darker. Um, and then I wonder if you, if there's even some like, I guess there's some reflection in the water too. I had not seen that before. Nice. <clears throat> there's no eyes, unfortunately. I drew this duck so big um, that I could put an eye in there and I think I'd get away with it. Um, let me zoom in on this, on this duck. You might not be able to see my drawing or, well, you will, but you, you won't be able to see the hair in. Is that as far as I can zoom in? That's a shame. Um, I was hoping you'd be able to see, um, let me see if I can focus. <clears throat> um, this duck, the second duck, well, I don't know. The wing itself seems to be making a diamond shape. And this is what, and, you know, if you look at the back, maybe it's the second duck that does it. So let me draw this, let's just draw the second duck, screw it. Um, I'm gonna follow the same format, but I'm, I'm trying to finish the bottom of the, the duck's wing. And I feel like it shows up better in the second one, but I don't know. There's so few marks. There really are so little marks that he uses because it's so small. Like it's so small that I couldn't even, I mean, it was hard for me to even draw that small. I will try though. Cause if I, if I go up from here um, very playfully, oh God, I just put the pencil. Um, very playfully, he has some, some other birds that are also swimming and are very far away. So in the, in the sense that, these birds are getting smaller as they go back. Um, you know, I could still put a little duck behind this one. And I could get away with, yes, making it really small. <clears throat> I'm still gonna draw, I'm still gonna draw it larger. Um, all right, so I want these ducks to be in line. So I'm gonna carry my watermark over. And I'm going to do my Nike swoosh. And the tail really does stick out of there. This guy seems to have, um, in my other class, when I did draw this before, I, instead of the neck is so awkwardly connected um, or not connected at all, that I was saying, maybe we should just draw the head second. And if you draw that rounded head, and then the duck beak, um, then you link the head to the body. And if the head is higher, you're gonna have a long neck. If the neck is lower, um, then it's gonna be like right up against his body, almost to the point where you doesn't have a neck. Kind of in a similar way that um, the heron didn't look like it had a neck because it was so close. Um, I wonder if we could draw a heron with a long neck. Whoa. All right, hold on. Let's just finish the second one. Uh, the shadow on the underside of the boat of the of the duck has more straight lines. There's a contact point with the water. And then has some shadow. This guy looks like he's got an eye in there. Feathers on the back. He's so small. Um, my the little kids actually did this thing, where you show that it's um, that he's swimming. You show these little waves, like the little the miniature wake that the duck creates from swimming in the water. 
there's the reflection on the water, and then there's that little wake that can suggest direction. Anyway, I love them. I love these little ducks. I just can't believe how um, how efficient he was with those mark making. It's almost like it. Well, there's so few marks in the duck that it it could almost read like a like a like letters. Oh, Stacy's in jail. <clears throat> All right, we are at 11.17. We've been crushing the art thing. Can we have a little, maybe like a little show and tell? Do we dare? Um, and then we can kind of see where else we're gonna go. Um, we're gonna, I think we should draw the deer, but we also, I wanna make sure we have enough time for, we'll do, we can do the deer and the, uh, and the dragon. Let me go grab the dragon boat right now. You guys get ready to do some finishing touches and then we'll have a quick show. <clears throat> There's these German drawings I have there. We have success. I just found this portfolio of uh postcards they're all durers really nice portraits oh my gosh look at this lady so pretty oh they look like sisters that's durer himself it's a self-portrait I've never seen this one before. We did so much work, man. This is very famous. This is a really good drawing. I have the, uh, it's a good painting, but I actually have the drawing of that. Most of these drawings exist. Yeah, these are all portraits. That guy looks very intense. He's thinking very hard about cookies. Really wonderful eyes. Okay, that's not what we're here to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's another uh, self-portrait of Durr when he was like uh, a kid. 
some etching, I think. Oh my God. Oh my. Wow. <clears throat> whole dirt book and there's no dragons. I found a dragon, but it's not the Dura dragon. I, mean, I feel like I don't know if I want to like waste it. I don't want to waste the the time drawing the dragon. Okay, let's see it. Let's see a. I'm gonna stop the share. See what you guys got, and then we'll come back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Ellie, I have you up first in my queue. So I'm okay. Gonna so, this is my cookie. Oh my gosh, wonderful. And then, this is my here and in my dogs. Yeah, great. Okay, that's it. That's what we've done. We crushed it. All right, Sebastian, you're next. Well done. Replace pain. So cookie. this is my cookie. <laughs> it is a happy. That's a, that's one happy cookie. And then instead of doing the ducks and the heron, I decided to go with another uh, sketch by this artist. Okay, cool. Is that a Durer? Uh, no, it's by the Bosch guy. Oh, that's harmonious Bosch. Oh my gosh, I've never seen. I haven't. Like I said, I have a very superficial understanding of this guy's life and work mainly because some of it is so scary. Um, all right, Amelia, you're next. Okay, here's my cookie. Oh, let me turn off the water. You just have to hold it right at your face. I think you can keep it, but. Okay. So. Ooh, yeah. Oh my gosh, those colors. That's my cookie. I'm talking and then to with my, um, and my ducks. I didn't, I wasn't able to draw the first word. I kept trying to, I kept messing it up. And then here are my ducks. Yay. And it did not turn out. <laughs> yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, Tagwin. That was great. Amelia. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm not done yet. Um, okay. Um, I think I have Noah next on my queue. <laughs> replacement all right so i was just messing with the ducks i spilled my tea on my first heron so i just sketched another one really quickly and it looks kind of crappy all right but that's the first that's the second heron i mean not loving that now i'm just messing around with the ducks they're kind the of fun tea to draw. stained the tea stained heron those are nice ducks yeah those are great yeah you could smooth out the transition from the head into the neck um you know but nbd they look great yeah um all right. Who else is next? Uh, Madeline. Or uh, no, let's see. I think it's, uh, who's upside down? Yeah, I mean, um, who did I say is next? Madeline, you're next. Okay, mine is small and together, but there's no cookie. Yeah. They're my birds. Lovely. That's such a nice page. Such a nice page. All right, Dara. This is my cookie. Thank you. Lovely. This is my heron. That's a nice heron. Oh, and I like the cattails. 
but the ducks came out really bad, so I'm not going to show them. <laughs> okay, you don't have to show them. Um, Action Jackson. Um, I don't know if you could hear that. Was did anyone else hear that? I heard it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, how about Simone? Where are you? I'm the one that's upside down. Right. No, I know. But should I do go to that one or should I go to the iPad? Oh. Uh. Yeah. I'm the one that's not on the iPad. Okay. That's fine. Simone's iPad is actually uh my friend's mom, who's not in the class right now. Eden's yeah. mom, Miss Simone. So. Okay. That's fine. Oh, I've got two up you there. You're gonna have to hold it upside down. Yes, you did. It is it upside, upside down. down. I know it's perfect. Right. That's oh, that's my cookie. Okay. Cookie. I keep saying it like Cookie Monster. Yes. Nice yes. boat. Okay, cool. That rocks. Yeah, should we sketch the boat? I don't know. Um. All right. Uh, Eden, can we see yours? It looks awesome, Simone. Thank you. Nice. I'm not done. Um, all right. You want to show any of it? And then Naomi? Not really. Nah. Okay, you don't have to. Naomi, how about you got anything good? Yes. I like my cookie, but my duck doesn't look really good, so I'm not gonna show it. That's fine. Just... Oh my gosh, those cookies. I love the scale change too. They should make miniature ones. Wow. And that heroin looks awesome too. Thank you. All right, Janaya, you're up. You feel like it. I got a sense. All right, um, uh, this was it. If you can see it. If it's oh yeah. Back. Yes, I can see. I can see them all. All right, wonderful. Glory day. Um, all right, so I hope I don't get anybody too upset, but uh, Simone, I don't think we're going to do the... Hold on, there's got to be a dragon in this book somewhere. That's a scary dragon. Okay, fine. We're going to do a dragon. It's going to be scary. And you asked for it. You asked for it. Oh, my gosh. All right, here we go. Let's do the deer. And then I'll build up my courage to do the to do the dragon. I do want to do the deer because the deer will like round out this. The I feel like the ducks and the heron. Uh, the ducks and the heron are really nice. Um, but if we do like a non uh, avian creature screen share, it'll round out that little design, and then it'll introduce the whole left side of the picture, and there'll be different kinds of grass and a little bush, and I think we'll be. I think everyone will be happy, and. I, my drawing will be nice too. Okay. iPad, share. And then we're gonna do this crazy serpent, but it's not gonna, it's not the one that we had for the other books. I just don't have it here. And I had that entire other Durer book and the entire other Durer book did not have any of his woodcuts in it. And that's where all the dragons are for like the heads of the um, stuff. But I'll have it next week. Last week I was at home and here I'm at the studio, so. <clears throat> okay, so this is the scale of the duck relative to our deer. So if you look at like the whole size of the duck, it's about the size of the deer's head. You know, not exact, but similar. And I have not drawn this yet. So that's like, I'm definitely excited about it. Um, all right, so we can keep going from the heron which I think is good on here. There's the heron that goes to the ducks across the water um, onto the other shoreline. So this is the path that the beavers were going in. And then this is the uh, path that leads kind of up. And maybe it is, it is even like where the deer is heading, you know, to drink, to drink water. Um, all right. So there's a lot of different ways of doing this, but the way that I have been like thinking about it, I've been thinking about this for like days now, um, you know, anticipating drawing this. Do you see that circle? 
there's like a circle inside like the main portion of this deer. So I'm going to start with that. And if anybody else has any other starting methods, like, you know, go for it. But um, I'm going to do, I'm going to do the circle. And I think the circle will be kind of interesting because um, on the whole right side, basically from six o'clock, almost all the way down, you know, you imagine like it's a clock, you know, the 12 o'clock position is up here. And then, you know, six o'clock is where the legs are. And then from basically 12 o'clock all the way down to like maybe 530, maybe five, that's where this S curve in the neck occupies. All right. So I'm a big fan of getting the head, you know, of your, of whatever you're drawing first. And I'm going to use a combination of rectangles and I could be wrong, but I'm going to do rectangle for the head and I'm going to do another rectangle for the snout. <clears throat> so I'm assuming it's a stag. I'm assuming it's a deer. Um, most of the times the deer, like their ears are facing forward. They're also huge and they stand up. Um, but this, this deer does not have any antlers and it looks like they're kind of, the ears are kind of angled back. But no, which whatever they are in my mind, I'm seeing them as like leaves, you know? So I, whenever I think of ears, I think of like a leaf shape. So that's just a comforting thing for me. Cause I feel like I've drawn a lot of leaves and I like, I understand leaves. Um, so that's what I'm kind of defaulting back to. Um, and we just gotta, you gotta start, you know, you really gotta start somewhere with this. Um, so, the other interesting thing is that the deer is actually on a hill, which is wild. Um, I'm using shapes to describe anatomy. And this is so far what we've done is like relatively familiar anatomy. Like we put a little dot for the eye, we put a little dot for the nose. So we've got head, neck, that original circle, I didn't name it, um, but really what it is, I think it's like the basically the, the shoulder of the of the deer and then i guess the rib cage as well which is wild because usually rib cages are like more oval shaped but he's kind of like squished together um so we're going to call that rib cage and then we're going to follow the spine back and then we're going to use another rectangle which i'm going to call the pelvis so and is it a rectangle yeah is it like a rhombus it's kind of like more like a rhombus um, and then we're going to get, that's going to be the pelvis. So that's his hips. And you can tell that's his hips because you think about like, you know, your, your neck is part of your spine. And then you go down the middle of your spine into your hips and then the hips go up into the tail, like the tailbone. So we've kind of like linked up all of the um, major parts of the anatomy through the spine, which is good. And there is a little bit of a rear end here. His little, you know, his little little deer tush and then we have to get the trapezoid of the back leg so this is the major portion of like the hip to the knee um that's the thigh and that's deers can jump they can leap they're like super strong it is a long large uh trapezoid and that's so those are the shapes that we're doing and so if this is the hip to the knee then the next shape is knee to the ankle. I'm gonna use another rhombus maybe. And then I'm gonna put a little, um, like a little dark circle at the knee. Just so you guys can think that's the knee. And then I'm actually gonna do the same thing with the elbow. Back here, it's actually shoulder to elbow and then elbow to wrist, but we haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, all right, so we did the pelvis, which is the hips, which is the first shape. Then we did this trapezoid, which is the largest of the leg shapes. Um, that's the thighs. Then it goes, you know, hip to knee, that's the thighs. And then knee to ankle, you know, this is kind of the Achilles heel. And then we get this long, elegant um, ankle to the hoof. And I'm gonna call that a trapezoid as well. And we'll do a little hoof at the bottom. Nice. All right. 
Um, I guess the rib cage does, you know, connect into the um, legs. You think about the dog, like you know, dogs or cats, and mainly dogs, but they have like the like the soft parts of their belly. You know, they roll on their back. You can pet their belly. Above that is the rib cage, um, and then you know you get into the leg. So the rib cage appears the top part, and that's going to turn into the soft underbelly, and then that kind of goes behind the the the, the, the calf muscle. Oh man, this is awesome. Um, all right, so we got the shoulder to the elbow, which we did, which was like basically the arm that overlaps the original circle for the rib cage. And then elbow here to the wrist, I'll do another trapezoid. And then the wrist to the, um, basically the fingers, which is the hoof. And then we'll just add a hoof down here. And I had not sketched, um, make the angle. I was just gonna hope, I was kind of like just hoping that worked out. So um, in my mind, the front legs are lower and the back leg is higher. Um, and hopefully that did work out in your drawing as well. If they're on the flat, if they're on the flat plane, like if it's, he's just standing on the ground because both of the feet are lined up, that's okay too. Um, usually the first time you draw something, it's, it's yeah, you know, it, it it doesn't come out perfect. So it's you when you start when you start drawing, especially you know the way I've been you know this is the first time I've drawn this, so I'm like just seeing stuff for the first time as well. So um, you got to give yourself a little bit of uh, give yourself some some uh, forgiveness. Oh look at that! So this uh, I I wouldn't read as I wouldn't call this a mistake yet. Um, but look at how the back leg um, of the deer, the very back leg of the deer, it's the, the whole part of the foot is along the, the edge of the hill. So like you can't tell where the edge of the hill is and where the leg is, which is when you're making a drawing, you kind of want to be able to distinguish between, um, you know, objects and the kind of the leg and the side of the hill all blend together. Um, the best part about having drawn the leg, the back leg and the front leg, question? To me, it looks like the leg is going behind the hill, to me. Yeah. Um, First, it, yeah. It, let, me, let me zoom in and I'm gonna cut this down. Um, so what I was, what I was gonna, what I, the, what I was about to say, which should be helpful for you know, answering this question or solving this problem, we drew the um, hip to the knee, knee to the ankle, ankle to the ball of the foot, and then you see the hoof. We're gonna look for those exact same things um, on the other leg. So there's like tush, thigh. So then you go tush, thigh. You barely see the thigh because it's mostly covered up by the body. Then it goes knee to ankle, and then ankle to the hoof, and then there's the hoof on the bottom. I, I, think, I think that the hill comes over part of it. But yeah, I think that, I think the hill, that's why it looks see how it looks so skinny it probably looks so skinny because the hill is covering up um at least part of the leg oh wait i see what you're saying you think that that might just be total hill and then the leg just disappears behind it wow yeah. i think you might be right all right so if i draw this hill up this that would make life a lot easier so you do the little deer tush and then you go do a little bit of the thigh and then you just show that this leg disappears behind the hill. That's good. <laughs> I mean, whenever you, whenever you, it, you can do less work um, and create the same effect, it can be very efficient. Yes. Yes. All right, cool. Um, as far as the front leg goes, um, you, know, you want to think about the um, all four legged animals are basically doing push ups all the time. They don't have four legs. They have two legs and two arms. They just stand on their arms. And I say that like a thousand times over. So if you think about it, um, this guy's doing push ups. So the chest goes in between the front leg and the back leg. So you could um, actually. Yeah, I'll just do it the way he did it. I was going to say, you could just draw two legs, you know, one here and then just repeat it. 
so it looks like he's got two legs, but that's not how he does it. He makes it a little bit more interesting where um, the left leg, the left arm rather, you know, passes behind the first one and reemerges on the other side. And it's mostly in shadow. Does look good. Yoni, could you throw me a kneaded eraser? Oh, he's got his headphones on. Hold on. I'm going to go get a kneaded eraser and so I can show you how I like to use kneaded erasers. Kneaded erasers, um, they're like this, they're the ones that they're like gray. They look like silly putty. And it's you use them for when you have the right line, but you want to lighten it. So like, do you see how like the front of my leg here? I had, that's like the correct line for the leg, but it's like a little bit too dark. So instead of like you know, having to use this little eraser to try to clean up my drawing. Okay, so we're gonna have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop this and like, I'm gonna clean this drawing up in the next three minutes. And then we're gonna switch over to the, uh, to the dragon slash serpent. <laughs> Okay, so here's my kneaded eraser. It's gray. Um, and when you say when it's kneaded, N E D, it's actually K N E A D. So you knead it like it's dough, you know, with your fingers. Um, and what it does is it, you use it like a stamp. So there's this head. I stamp it and you turn it over, and you can actually see the deer's head. I just lightened everything. So it's, it's basically glorified, expensive, silly putty. Um, and I'm gonna do it for the back legs. So I'm stamping it and then the legs show up. So the whole thing is getting lightened so that I can then put the lines where they're supposed to go. Can you use silly putty? I feel like you could. I don't know why, I don't know why you couldn't if you actually had it. Um, except that it might have like some chemicals in it that might not be good for the paper and maybe even some acid that can change the paper, uh, can change the color of the paper over time. But I haven't had silly putty in so long. I remember the first time I got silly putty at my, it was at Thanksgiving at my aunt's house. And we just, I just, I used it all day. I thought it was so cool because you could like stamp the newspaper and have like a perfect facsimile and you could like stretch it out. And I don't know, I, I thought it was fun. <clears throat> okay, so this is me just like drawing the drawing as I like to say, um, which is, you know, you kind of refocus on silhouettes. You know, there's like the top of the brow ridge and you know, this back ear in that leaf shape is like pretty dark. So that gets shaded. The top of the snout is a lighter line than the front of the nose and the bottom of the snout. I'm trying to think about a majestic deer here. Um, I feel like the ears though, the ears look like, they look like they could be like donkey ears or something. Um, the top of the ear is a lighter line than the bottom of the ear. And I'm just giving it my, I'm just giving it a try. I'm gonna see the angle of the, the, the neck, how that you know curves in the back. And you know, some of the curves um, are expressed internally, you know, and kind of feel, I guess, like fur. You know, you have the front of the neck. It's a beautiful curve. And then you have like a division between the neck and the shoulders with our original circle. I and mean, if you think of that original circle, and then you have the underside of the neck's in shadow. The underside of the chest um, is in shadow. The back leg is in shadow. There's just so much dark in this picture. And I do think that these marks in, like inside the body are you know, designed to make it darker, but also um, make it look like fur. So you can think about 
both of those things. You know, think about how to shade the legs, but then also how to make them look like fur with the same mark. And you know, my my ears look even like antlers. So sometimes, you know, everyone I get accused of being my own biggest critic, but you know, I I, I call it how it is. I don't want I'm not gonna I'm not if I do a great work of art, I'll call it a great work of art. If I make something that screw it up, make it look bad, I'll I'll say that. Like I'm not, I don't uh I don't have a lot of emotional attachment um, to my art. I'm really kind of detached from it. And I found that that's a, if you're concerned about it being good or bad or anything like that, like um, it can kind of impede your, you know, your flow and your thinking. So my strategy as an artist is to, you know, try to maintain high quality and standards, but then also just like, I try to draw a lot. I try to have have a high volume. And if I make 10 drawings and two of them are good, I'm happy with that. And rather than trying super hard to make two really fine drawings, I'll try to make 10, not worry about it. And then if I get two that are good, then it's like, that's a win. Like that's, um, I'm happy with that. And that comes with, um, you know, knowing that to get good at anything, you have to spend a lot of time doing it. So there's no sense kind of being, like overly critical of your own work, um, you can assess it. Don't mean, don't, I'm not saying don't assess and don't even judge. I mean, you can even judge it um, in a way, but um, you know, you want to be, you want to be careful just because you don't want your own thing. You don't want to psych yourself out when you're, when you're drawing, when you're making art, because it's so easy. Cause there's so many, there's like so many, there's so much room for doubts and insecurity and unknown. And whenever you're dealing with the unknown, you're inevitably feeling insecure because, um, you know, like the habit of being, um, working with things that you don't know the answer to, um, you know, that's, there's a comfort with the known. And so if there's, if there's comfort with things, knowing what they are, then in theory, it's uncomfortable not knowing. And so that was, I feel like I sounded like, Donald Rumsfeld right there. Just don't just don't judge too hard and keep making art and you'll be okay. There's no knowns and then there's unknown unknowns. I have to look that quote up. I love I love my dear. Okay. I move this over and I zoom out a little bit. I might be able to see some more environmental stuff that I could add. Cool. Um, it looks as though, as I zoom out, it looks like there might be a, a, you know, a shadow underneath this deer, like the ground. And there's some grass. All right. And then we're switching over to the serpent. Coincidentally, it's on the very next page. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I didn't mean to freak you out, but do you think, what do you think this is right here? Do you think that is a. I thought maybe for a second that the the uh, the deer was throwing a shadow onto the water, and thinking like right those those marks are right there, and then it feels almost like smoke or fire, but I don't think that's it. But there's not a there's not basically a mistake on this entire drawing, so maybe it is a reflection on the water. Did you guys have any thoughts? My sister commented that it, that. It, that that it looked like guts coming out of the deer. Looked like a what? My sister commented guts coming out of the deer. That's what my sister said. I mean, it could be, I mean, yeah, like I see that. Like if there's like an arrow, you know, like in, 
Yeah, uh, yeah. The the scene like Saint Sebastian is the saint that was you know fired upon with lots of arrows. Um, you know, de- hunting of deer like Diana in the woods. I mean, there's like a lot of uh, you know allegorical um, precedent for you know a, a you know hunted deer. I'm not saying that's what this is, but um, it's not it's it's not off base. <clears throat> All right. Let's do this. Let's do the serpent. This one was so scary. God, so scary. So the title of this piece, um, this is by uh, Aliart de Hamel, The Rising of the Brazen Serpent. And I think it's too scary to even do. I think it's too scary. I can't do it. I can't do it. Let's do this one. This one's this one is a little bit nicer. I think it's more manageable for today too. Cuz I think it'll be a follow up to the uh so I was looking through all of my I was looking through all of my books in, you know, from this era. And you'd be surprised like usually there's lots of dragons cuz this is um this is Saint Margaret. Let me see if I can lift it up. I can't lift it up. Shoot. I just have to move the book. This is called Saint Margaret and the Dragon. And she is, there's Saint Margaret. And I don't know about Saint Margaret either, but she's got a halo and a crown and the staff of the cross. And she's standing on top of the serpent, which basically just looks like my dog begging for food. So it makes it a lot less intimidating in my in my world. Um, there's the there's the twist. If you look at the other one that we were about to do, there's this uh, the spiral of the tail, which is like that snake tail, um, which is very definitive of uh, yeah, it's very serpentine. Um, so there's there's two. He's got like tie, uh, lion lion paws um very uh like the the ears on this guy are very much like the like kind of like a little too much like the the stag so the the head of the this this dragon feels a lot like the deer that we just drew um i'm going to try and draw this the the tail the serpentine tail and i'm going to call it a day so let me drop this down even further Poor St. Catherine, she's not the focus of this one. Or St. Margaret, I should say. Straighten it out. So hopefully this can satisfy your uh, dragon fix. And then next week we'll do like a real one and we'll spend a good chunk of the time on it. And it'll kill two birds with one stone. We'll get to have the Durver um, follow up and we'll have the, the dragon. All right, good. Mm-hmm. Almost straight. <laughs> All right. So I would definitely take a screenshot of this because I'm going to try and draw it in five minutes, which I'm not sure if everyone else is going to be able to draw it in five minutes. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to draw in five minutes. There's my duck page. So this is my, my deer page. I don't want to mess it up. I'm going to keep this good thing going. Okay, the bottom of my picture is right here. <clears throat> 
All right, nice. So the, the tip of the tail starts off like an S. And then, so if you start with an S, that's narrow at the top and gets thicker. Then you go from that and then we just go straight into the, the caramel delight. So the caramel delight gives us that circle, you know, that donut. And then you spin out of the donut into a wider tail. And then St. Margaret kind of eliminates the, um, you know, eliminates a lot of the headache of doing like the body of the dragon. So if you put this oval in here, that's basically all you're gonna need to do because you gotta be able to do fabric and the fabric will cover that up. Um, there are these two paws. So I'm gonna place the paws. And those are, those are like lion, they're lion paws. And then we'll go from the body, which is the oval into the neck of the dragon. And then we're gonna come into the stag. So I'm actually not thrilled, but I'm like <laughs> as thrilled as I can be as an art teacher when you have one rectangle for the head and then we'll do a trapezoid for the snout. And then the mouth is open, so you've got to add that lower mouth. Cool. We have the teardrop shape for the eye, which is actually very similar to the um, to the body of the heron. And then we'll do the the curved leaves for the ears. I guess these are horns. The horns are just S curves. Wow. I love drawing lion paws. Um, I don't have that much time, so we can't really do it. Um, so I'm just gonna quit while I'm ahead. Um, what is that? Is it, what is that type of monkey that can blow up his nose and it hangs off? It's a very specific type of monkey or baboon. I mean the proboscis monkey? What's it called again? A proboscis monkey? Yes, look at the proboscis monkey uh, nose. It's not blown up, but it hangs off the uh, the dragon's the the dragon's head. So you got two teeth at the top. Um, he has an overbite in kind of a natural um, canine kind of way. And then he even has some you know helping with the transition from the head into the neck. Um, he's got some. Could be some scales or some even some fur. And the ears can kind of be defined by seeing the inside. And then, you know, the silhouette line is going to be very important because there's no clear directional source. So it's like the artist. He just gets really involved in, it's called the um, Austrian master. So they actually, the, the artist is, is unknown. Um, so I don't mean to say he, but it could be in a she. Um, but you get this silhouette line. And then because if you don't have any major source for a light, um, you just start with the outside line and then blend it in. And it's almost like, the nicest thing. We just kind of. Yeah. Do you want to see some actual deer? Yes. Oh my gosh, a thousand times yes. Are they outside your house right now? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. Yes. 
Joe, why are you sketching? You should just you should just start drawing them. <laughs> that's your that should be like your immediate homework. Um, okay, so really quickly, if you have your tortillion, y'all, you should really be able to draw this curly tail that like almost that fast because you just shore up your silhouette and then blend it out. You know, there's the inside of the Samoa that's, you know, shaded. There's the bottom of the Samoa that's darker. And then you have the bottom of the, the thickness of the tail. And then the top is also a little bit dark. And it's about fading those edges into the middle. It's the caramel. It's the caramel dragon. Nice. He doesn't even have any scales. He should have some scales. I feel like it doesn't. I hope it doesn't make it look cheap. I like the scales though. <clears throat> oh yeah, um, in a similar way that that the back leg of the stag, um, you know, the back front uh, leg was just super dark. That happens with this ear as well. So the, the front one's light, the back one's dark. It's pretty standard. All right. Well, hopefully that that did it. I know it was super rushed at the end, but the lesson was draw, 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 and I feel like we did. So do you have a salt lick out there or are they just they just come up to the window? Really? What? Do they come up to the window? Just regular? Uh what not. Are they, what are they eating? Are they eating like your parents' garden? They're eating weeds in our garden. <laughs> well, that's convenient. That's very convenient. Um, all right. So let me make a note. I do want to finish the uh the dragon, maybe we'll just do lion paws like legitimately. Um, anybody want to show in the last like minute or two as I stop the share? Yeah, let's see it, Tara. Move this over, hold on, let me get the cue up here. So I wanted to show my stag. Yeah. My gear. Oh, it's so nice. Such a nice drawing. And it's going downhill. That is, that is for me. Um, I think Jax is trying to show. Got a mute button. You could fill that whole thing out, man. Um, and if you Google um, this drawing, it was called Wood People, I think, or Tree People. But I didn't even talk about that in the beginning, but the, um, the original drawing that Harmonious Bosch did, there's a painting of it, which is a little scary, but um, it's called Tree Man. The, the actual art piece is called Tree Man, if you want to follow up on it and see the rest of it. It does have really beautiful clouds and trees and other birds and stuff. Uh, Madeline, did you want to show yours? Let's see what you got. So I got like part of the dragon thing and then the stag. The stag is very handsome. Okay, cool. That was fast. Good. Sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, you got the tail. Kinda all over the page, so, you know. Today was like more of like a sketching kind of class. It wasn't like a full blown finished thing. Cool. Thank you. Um, Sebastian, how'd that portrait turn out? I didn't really add too much to the portrait. Um, I did do the St. Margaret and the Dragon, but I did a sort of 
variation of it. So I'm still okay. working on getting the shapes down. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And just and like re, and just like Googling St. Margaret and the dragon, like there'll be like a thousand different interpretations of it too. So um Simone, can we see yours or look like you're ready to show? Thank you, Sebastian. And Amelia, you're next. Oh yeah. Okay, great. Nice stag. Real nice stag. Going downhill, it's in that little gully. <laughs> yeah. That I, I feel like you've sketched dragons before. Good work. Um, Amelia, can we see yours? Yeah, oh yes. That helps. Shading it in helps so much. <laughs> these, these hills are killing me. There's a whole narrative with it. Lovely. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. Tegwin, we'll we see, we see what you guys are up to. Let's see. Is your, uh, is Rowan there? Does he want to see it? You want to show anything? Sure. Nice. I it was. I knew if I was patient, I would hear signs of life. <laughs> Everyone is hiding under the table. So, Ow. But this this is my deer. Yeah, that is some that is some true art. Okay, cool. Anything else you guys want to show? Um. I don't think so. <laughs> Not. I can show. Yeah, let's see it, Ellie. Uh, and then Ellie and Naomi, we're coming up to you guys next. Please, please. This is my dear. Ooh, it fits into the composition so nicely. Thank you. This is the real dear. I was going to say, you have an advantage. Thank you. Yeah, it's not cheating, but. And then you could have put the beaver in there, too, because you got it on your shirt. And your sweatshirt. Um, I'm gonna add the uh, the beaver. I have a beaver sculpture on our windowsill, and that's what I was gonna be for Halloween, but I never did anything. Um, no, can we see yours? And then Janaya and Eden. You guys want to show it? Yeah. Okay, it looks awesome. Um, the back leg feels like you could either make one leg thick and then the other leg thick or make the other yeah leg it didn't come out quite right it's not, bad. it's not bad it doesn't matter it just has to do with, you want both legs to feel like they're the same thickness because of the bilateral symmetry so either make the one side bigger or make the other side smaller or you can even do both you can even like shrink one and then make one a little bit bigger and then they'll be even mm -hmm. um, i got you yeah janaya how about you you want to show all righty yes this is the deer. Cool. Look at those ears. <laughs> I know. In fact, those ears are so good. Uh, the, the body's really nice, too. Thank you. Um, all right, cool. Naomi, you want to show yours? Eden? What did I just do? Um, so I didn't really draw the deer, but here's the tail of the dragon. Let's see it. Oh, wow. Cool. I mean, hold the pin up. Hold it. Don't hold your spot there. Okay. Yeah, that's you nailed it. You nailed it. All right. Awesome. Ed, do you want to show anything else or are you good? That's good. All right. Cool. I think that's pretty much everybody, right? Did I miss anyone? Anyone want to shout out? Didn't you? Can I share? Yes, please. Let me, let me tag it, Eden. Hold on. Whoa, that is mystical. Look at that ram. Yes, Pisces. That's a great, that's a great transition. The neck is great. The decoration's great. The tail is spectacular. Hold up a little bit higher, please. I couldn't see the I can't see the bottom because of the thing. There it is. Oh my goodness. All right. Yes, art has been made, people. We have made art. We have accomplished, we've achieved art. Yeah, Dara. Could I show my dragon? Yeah, yeah, let me pin you, hold on. I can only see like five of you at a time. So if it looks like I can't, if I, if I miss anybody, it's not my fault. Well, 
the place man yes oh my goodness that's great yeah, so we should think about yeah, and look up uh, Margaret. She'll she has there, she has certain symbols because you can always have every saint has like these like symbols that they carry so they can be identified in pictures. Um, and if you finish the rest of the body, like give her, I, she probably has a crown. I don't know about Saint Margaret, but they probably she probably has elements that are very easily, uh, you know, found out. Okay, I got to roll. I'll talk to you guys later. Great class. Thank you. Yeah. No. Or do your now. Thank Bye. you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Cheers.